Well, let's start with ladders. I'm glad you brought that up. There are more falls putting up and taking down Christmas decorations each year than there should be. So if you're going to use a ladder, you want to make sure you have a steady, stable area. You want to make sure you have somebody with you. Don't do it by yourself. You want to have somebody helps you climb, helps you get down. And I shouldn't have to say this, but you should never be on the top rung. And we were talking a little earlier, you <laughs> violate that one. Um, you also want to make sure that if you have pets or small children in the house, that they aren't running around underneath the ladder that could cause a problem. So when you are putting up lights and not being on that top which step, which I have done many <laughs> times, unfortunately, what other tips can you give people about just holiday lights? Holiday lights. Okay, so holiday lights are uh, can be tricky, but the basic ones are, are these. If you take them out of storage and you look at them and they have frayed wires or they have cracked bulbs or cracked sockets, don't use them. Throw them away. Don't try to tape them up. And when you go to buy your new lights, make sure you look for that label that indicates they've been tested by an independent party. Can you explain that a little bit? Because yes. I've never... So everything, every product, consumer product, has regulations that govern them. And uh, we require, the CPSC requires that toys, lights, things of that nature be looked at, not by just the manufacturer through their testing, but from a third party lab. And they test them to make sure they comply with all the strict safety requirements that are out on uh, the so cover. So the tag that's on the Christmas lights, for instance, right. that's the actual tag that says that it what, it passed the test. That's exactly right. And so are there lights that are on the market now that don't have that? They should not be. Okay. So be careful when you're ordering online because okay. sometimes uh, you know that uh, that's an easier way to sneak in some non-compliant goods. I actually don't think a lot of people know about that. I mean, I've been doing design now for 17 years, and just even as a designer, when I get lamps and having that yep. tag, I just thought Very it was an important. eyesore. I had no idea. No, it's important. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> what about Christmas trees? Um, before we get to Christmas trees, okay. I want to uh, add one more thing about the lights. When you put them up, don't use a stapler. Never use a stapler. Okay. <laughs> um, and when you store them, make sure you don't put them away wet. And to the extent that you can avoid it, don't put them in the attic because the heat in the summertime could damage them for the next year. Okay. All right, let's move to Christmas trees. Yes, a big one. All right. Fresh or artificial? Well, so I have always had fresh because I grew up with a fresh tree. This is the first year that I bought artificial and only because fresh to me, it's a little bit more high maintenance. Of course they smell great, but it's, I always have the pine needles on the floor and it's just, I have to water it every day. So this is my first year. I'll let you know how it went okay. with the artificial. I might right. go back to fresh next year. Well, you, you brought up a good point about the artificial and that is watering. So any of you who are going to have a fresh tree, water it every day, every day, every day. And that will also keep it from having the pine needles on the floor rather than on the tree. Because if it's dry, it could literally go up in flames. And we're going we're gonna to see that demonstration later. Let's go back to our little tag on the pre-lit Christmas tree. So uh, all pre-lit Christmas trees are um, independently tested. But you can also buy an artificial tree that is fire resistant. Now that doesn't mean it won't catch fire, but it certainly will be protected a lot more than a dry Christmas tree, uh, fresh tree. Um, same thing with the lights. If you have a pre-lit artificial tree, make sure you check those lights to make sure there aren't any broken bulbs and sockets before you plug it in. Is there a way, if you do have a tree that maybe isn't fire resistant, that you could add something or treat it in some way? Yeah, it's time to get a new one. It's time to get a new one, yeah. okay. What about candles? I know a lot of people have problems with menorahs because the candles drip mm -hmm. onto the furniture. So I always tell people at least put it on a glass mm -hmm. or a mirrored tray so exactly it's a lot right. easier to clean mm -hmm. up. But I know people love to use candles during the holiday seasons, myself included. What tips would you give people for candles? I love candles. Me too. And they do, have the, the holidays, they have that nice warm glow. But you're right about something. Uh, when you have a menorah or a kinara, putting it on glass or a, a flat, non-flammable surface not only helps with cleanup but it also maintains a safety um, point because you don't want any open flame near something that's flammable. An, a good example of that would be you don't want to have a menorah around a window where there are curtains or flammable fabrics. So you want to keep all of your lit candles, flat surface, non-flammable areas, keep them away from curtains. Um, 
couple other things with candles, don't ever leave them unattended. That is the one thing we see so often, yeah. something so simple. Um, but Especially when there are tons of kids running yeah, around, anything could spill. That's exactly right, don't leave them unattended. And a couple little things, if you are gonna burn candles, trim the wicks so that you don't get a really big flame. And um, let me make a suggestion. Some of the battery operated candles are gorgeous. They are. Um, and they're safer. Yeah, a lot of them have even flickering uh, lights they now. They do, I looks, did buy some this year. They're great. Yeah. Okay, so what about cooking? I love Thanksgiving because I just love having friends and family over. I absolutely love to cook, but I know that there are some safety regulations about cooking and room temperature and mm -hmm. it could get a little complicated. Yep. So you can make that a little bit easier for us. Okay, well, let's talk turkey. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk deep fried turkey. Oh yeah. Um, that's a pretty popular thing these days and um, that can be very dangerous. So if you're going to deep fry a turkey, three things to keep in mind has to be completely thawed. If you put a frozen turkey in that hot oil, it will have disastrous consequences. So thaw that turkey. Okay. Second, um, there's about five gallons of oil that go into a deep fryer for a turkey. Don't overfill it, that's it. Fill to the line or below it, because if you, when you put that turkey in, if there's too much oil, it will spill over, it will cause a fire. Okay. And third, and probably the most important, do not use that inside. Um, turkey fryers outside, away from the house. Like that, in the backyard. Backyard. We are not in the garage, not in the not meat, a balcony, not the porch, nothing like that. Get okay. it away from the house. My mom made a deep fried turkey for us one year, and it was awful. <laughs> Edit this out. <laughs> but it tasted like turkey jerky, so maybe just stick to the old-fashioned way. Well, actually, uh, I never had one, but we're going to friends this year, and they. They tell me we're going to be cooking a, uh, we're going to be deep frying a turkey. So I'll let okay, you let know. Okay, let me know how it goes. Okay. <laughs> For those of you who are going to be uh, doing more traditional cooking with an oven, um, a couple other things to keep in mind. Put your phones down when you're cooking. Um, pay attention because you know what it's like when there's too many things going on. You have all these people in the kitchen, little ones who could reach up, maybe touch a hot stove. You want to make sure you know where everybody is and what's going on. Also consider, um, not wearing loose clothing or long sleeves because if you're reaching for something you could uh, catch your clothes on fire and we do not want that to happen yeah and and things uh, that you don't think about that are very natural to do but could be a hazard leaving your pot holders next to the stove or a bag that you just emptied plastic or paper they could go up in, in flames so we don't want that to happen yeah just being super aware yep absolutely Okay, so now because gift giving is top of mind, especially as a mom, I want to talk about all the toys okay. and things that we have in front of us. All right, before we get to the toys, yeah, uh, two things you should do. Go to your child's closet or toy box and look for uh, recalled toys. So if your child has any recalled toys in that box, get rid of them. And that's pretty easy to do. You can go to our website, which is cpsc.gov, and we have a new phone app. So you can just have it right on your phone and check and see if there's anything that's been recalled. I hate, I, I hate to admit this as a mom, but I have never looked at a recall list in my life. Sabrina. I know, I know. Again, edit all of that out too. <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't, I don't think a lot of people know to do that. Well, we're gonna make sure you guys that. Yeah, get yeah. that notice out there. The good news is um, recalls on toys are, are just declining and declining. About 10 years ago, I think we had something like uh, 172 recalls. A year? A year, decline, decline, decline. This year we've had, I think, a, a dozen. Wow. So we're, the toys are getting safer. You can, um, it's not gonna be a big deal to go and, and, and look for them, but you should look for them. The second thing is, in addition to the recalled toys, Get rid of the ones that are broken. Mr. Bear here, he's not, he's in okay shape, but how many teddy bears have you seen where the eyes falling off, arms hanging? I know, but those are the best ones. No, no, <laughs> they're, not, they're not safe, and okay. here's why, okay? Um, this tiny little eye here, if it fell off, it's a choking hazard. Right. And if one fell off, the next one is, is bound to fall off. Get rid of it. That's really important. Okay. So let's talk about the toys, and, and while I mentioned choking hazards, Choking hazards and riding toys. Those are the two areas that send most of the kids to the ER. And that can be avoided. So I'm gonna get my handy dandy cylinder. If the ball or marble fits in here, it's a choking hazard for kids under three. And if you don't have this little handy dandy cylinder, uh, 
toilet paper roll, well, actually. A toilet like, paper yeah. roll. Um, so if we can fit size. in a toilet paper roll for any kid under the age of three, it's a no-no. Yes, that's okay. exactly correct. And, and I'll give you an example. Okay. This one doesn't, okay? Um, balloons. This, is, this was something that I didn't know. Balloons are a choking hazard. Not only can a child pick up a, an uninflated balloon, but once it's inflated and, and breaks, yeah. the little pieces on the floor, if, if a child puts that in their mouth, it could be a suffocation hazard that could be um, actually quite deadly. So we don't want to make sure. And, and you know what? While we're talking about that, so we're going to go back to the, the labels. Yep. There are labels on all toys that tell you, like this, this group of balls, where it doesn't fit in here, this one is okay for children ages four and up. So you want to look at the label, and that's really important. And let's talk about labels. Okay, another thing I have to admit. You oh. never look at the labels. No, I do. Th I actually do look at the labels. But I thought that meant, like, a kid four and up would just find this fun. I didn't realize it had anything to do with safety. No, I think that's part of it. I do think it's okay. part of it. Um, they are, I, you know, actually you raise a very good point. Not only will they find it fun, but there's a lot of science behind this. These are appropriate for children of that age and appropriate for their developmental. And while we're But on it's also appropriate for their safety. Exactly. Okay. And you know what else? Um, I'm glad, I'm actually glad you brought that up because it made me think of something else. Don't buy a toy that is too old for your child, even if you're thinking, I hear parents will say, well, my daughter's, you know, she's much more mature. They're not ready for that It's toy. like you're following me. <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm like, yeah, she's, As we, she's at a seven-year-old age. You, you have a four-year-old, I have an 18-year-old, so I've been through this already. But every toy, every toy has a, um, has a label on it. Um, see here, like this one is for, um, Choking tells you. small, yeah, it tells, yeah, you, it tells you there's choking hazards for okay. children under three. And a couple other things you want to remember. If you're buying a toy for a child um, who's, let's say, three, you want to look at three and up, right? But if there's a sibling in the house that's 18 months old, right. you need to stop again and think, well, is the toy that's appropriate for the three year old, like this one, going to have small parts? If it is, consider getting something else. Right. Okay? Um, safety gear. If you're going to get a riding toy, scooters are popular this year. Scooters, uh, bicycles, skates, rollerblades. The gift is not complete without the safety gear. So right. get a helmet, make sure the helmet fits, get the wrist guards, knee pads, get all the safety gear, and always remind the parent or supervisor of the child or guardian that do not let your kids just send them out in the driveway to ride unsupervised. That's where we see so many injuries because a child may be um, not supervised rides it out into the traffic. Right. Can end it whenever you're ready. 